Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the October 2023 International A Level uh, Statistics S1 exam from um, came from sorry from Edexcel International A Level. And this question here is about probability and Venn diagram. So it says Bob shops at a market each week. The event that Bob buys carrots is denoted by C, and Bob buys onions is denoted by O. At each visit, Bob may buy neither or one or both of these items. Okay, carrots, onions, or you either buy carrots on their own or onions on their own or both of them, some carrots and some onions, or none, neither of them. Okay, so the probability that Bob buys carrots is 0.65. The probability that, that Bob does not buy onions is 0.3. Does not buy onions 0.3. And the probability that Bob buys onions but not carrots is 0.15. So we can... Put some notation to this the probability that bob buys carrots so probability that by probability of c is 0 0.65 so we have a venn diagram so that means this circle should say 0 0.65 in total we can say from this that x plus y equals 0 0.65 from the uh, information we see here okay the probability that bob does not buy onions so the probability that bob does not buy onions okay o dash is, is 0 0.3 so not buying onions would basically be these two together, y plus z. So we can say y plus z is going to be 0 0.3. Everything outside of O, which is y and z. And the probability that Bob buys onions, but not carrots. So onions without the carrots. Okay, so only onions without carrots. It means onions alone. That's 0 0.15. Well, that's going to be just this part here. It's going to be w. Okay, w is 0 0.15. So we now got some information here, right? So we have this this amount there. Now let's see what we can do with what we found. It's down here, so we can uh, maybe use it in the space to find what we need. So I'll just put it over here for now. So I'll just leave it down here. One second, sorry about that, guys. Okay, that part doesn't want to be separate, so we'll just leave this for now. I'll just leave it there. Sorry about that. Just fluffing around there. So, yeah. So, we have this information. Now, we want to find, fill in the rest of the information that we need from this circle. Let me just do this. Hold on a second. Okay, so, here we have some of the information that we derived from above. Okay. So, now we know um, also from this information that W plus X plus Y plus Z has to equal 1. So if we see what we have here, we've got W. So we've got 0 0.15 plus X plus Y, we've got the whole of that 0 0.65. Okay, so X plus Y is 0 0.65 plus Z, which we don't know equals 1. So that will help us find what Z is. So if I add these together, I get 0 0.8. Um, so 0 0.8 equals, or 0 0.8 plus Z equals 1. So Z is equal to 1 minus 0 0.8. So Z is equal to 0 0.2. So now we have W equals 0 0.15. Um, we have X, Y, Z equals 0 0.2. We've got to find X and Y now. All right, so now we know W and Z. All right, we can use this. Um, we can use this. We, have, we, know, we now also know that Y plus Z equals 0 0.3. Now we, Z, we now, Z, now know that Z is 0 0.2. So Y plus 0 0.2 equals 0 0.3. So y is equal to 0 0.3 minus 0 0.2. So y is equal to 0 0.1. So this is 0 0.1 over here. Okay, so we know y is equal to 0 0.1. And we also know that x plus y equals 0 0.6. x plus y equals 0 0.65, sorry. So we know y is 0 0.1. So x plus 0 0.1 equals 0 0.65. So x equals 0 0.65 minus 0 0.1 so x equals 0 0.55 so that's this 0 0.55 and we have got everything we need 0 0.55 so there we have all of that information in our table okay so there's part a done now part b says find the probability that bob buys either carrots or onions but not both so either carrots or onions but not but not both so this is carrots and this is onions without the both part. So it's going to be the sum of those two. So it's going to be 0 0.25. Okay. 
So it's going to be basically the sum of, you can say, um, W plus Y. So it's going to be W plus Y, which is going to be 0 0.15 plus 0 0.1, which is equal to 0 0.25. So that's the answer to part B. And then it says, part C it says, show that the events C and O are not independent. So we have to understand what does it mean by the word independent events. Okay, not independent. So we should understand what independent events are. Now, we can say that the probability of C, if the probability of C times the probability of O is equal to their product of, is it, sorry, is it, if the product of C times O is equal to the probability of the intersection, then C and O are independent. This is when they are, this is the condition for two events to be independent, that the um, probability of one times the probability of the other uh, is equal to the probability of their um, intersection. Second. Independent. Independent. Okay. So if the product of their separate probabilities is same as the uh, probability of their intersection, they are independent. Independent means if one happening has no effect. Okay. So if you throw a dice, and you spin a coin, for example, then, uh, you know, what happens on the coin and the dice don't affect each other, the, the outcomes are independent. Or if you take two picks from a bag of balls of different color, and you take one pick, but then you replace the ball back into the bag, then the second pick has not been influenced by what happened on the first pick. But if you picked a ball out of the bag, and you, put, and you didn't replace it, then the second pick is going to be influenced by what you did in the first pick. It won't be independent. So independent events is when you know, the two, um, prob the two outcomes, they have no bearing on each other. Okay, there's no effect of one on the other. Okay, so that's, uh, if the probability of their separate, um, if, their, if their separate product of their pro separate outcomes is equal to the probability of the intersection, then we can say that they are independent. So in this case, the probability of C, which is carrots, is going to be um, 0 0.65. I think they told us that already. Okay, that's what we we're told and the probability of onions is going to be probability of O which is the whole of this circle here which is going to be 0 0.15.0.55 0 .55, that's 0 0.7 that right 0 0.15 plus 0 0.55 that gives you 0 0.7 that's right so the probability of just onions is or, or onions is 0 0.7 so, and the probability of the intersection between them is going to be what we found here to be x, which is 0 0.55. Okay, 0 0.55. So let's see. The probability of C times the probability of O will give us 0 0.65 times 0 0.7. Okay, if we multiply those together, that gives us 0 0.455. 0 0.455 and we can see the probability of C in section O is not equal to 0 0.455 there we can say that C and O are not independent so they do depend on each other okay so buying carrots and onions for him they do so if he's going to buy onions buying carrots will have some effect on that for him They're not independent, okay? Because if this was equal to 0 0.55, okay? If this was equal to 0 0.55, then they would be independent, okay? If this, if I multiply these together and I got 0 0.55, then it would be independent. Or if this was equal to 0 0.455, then it would be independent. Okay, so they have to be the same. That's part C, and that concludes um, question three, part one. Now three, part two. I think this is about a completely different situation, which we don't know about. F, G, and H are three events. F and H are mutually exclusive. F and G are independent. So as we mentioned, the difference between these mutually exclusive means, basically, um, one cannot happen um, at the same time as the other. So for example, if you are to pick from a bag of uh, you know, coins or, or, or cards or whatever, right? And the cards are numbered with numbers from one to 10. And you want to, with one pick, pick a number which is both even and odd. Well, 
You can't because even and odd are events which are mutually exclusive. If you're even, you can't be odd. And if you're odd, you can't be even by definition, right? There's no numbers which are both even and odd. However, if you were to pick one card and it could be, and you want to find the probability that, of picking a number that's, for example, odd and prime. Well, there are some numbers which are odd and prime. So there will be a, a possible for you to pick a card which is both odd and prime. Okay, for example, if you pick the number three, it's odd and prime. All right, so those events are not mutually exclusive. One can happen at the same time as the other. That's what mutually exclusive means. Independent means where one of them has no effect on the other. As I mentioned earlier, if you're picking, say, some balls from a bag of different colors, and you pick up one ball, and then you put it back in the bag, and then you take another pick, then the second pick is independent of the first pick. Okay? How, um, whereas if you took the ball out of the bag and you did not replace it into the bag, then the second pick would be conditional on the first pick. It wouldn't be independent of it. Then the second pick, its probability will depend on what came out on the first bag. Was it the same color as that or different color? The number of balls will change. The number of colors of each balls will change. So therefore, the, the probability will then be affected. It won't be independent of the first pick. So that's an idea or you know some sort of indication of the difference between these two. A lot of people don't understand what they mean or the difference between them. Okay, the important thing is for independent events, um, you know, in this case, we can say the probability of F times the probability of G is the same as the probability of F um, intersection G. Okay, the product of the several probabilities, probabilities will equal to the intersection the probability of the intersection if they're independent then this is true if we don't know the independent then you can't, can't say this is true okay so that's very important okay mutually exclusive means there's no intersection okay there's no intersection so if you have a venn diagram for f and h there will be f here there will be h there there's no place where they intersect so we know that the probability of f the probability of f union h would be the probability of F plus the probability of H. And normally you take away, you take away the probability of the intersection. Okay, because normally you have probability of this plus the probability of that. You've counted this part twice, so you take it away. All right, that's a general rule. But in this case, what happens is you can still use this formula because why? This is zero. There's no intersection. So it just becomes the probability of F plus the probability of H. And that's what we're going to use here. Okay, we're going to use the probability of, the prob the probability of F union h is equal to the probability of f plus the probability of h minus the probability of their intersection of the intersection okay so that gives you the probability of f which is 2 over 7 plus the probability of h which is 1 over 4 minus 0 so you just add these together so you have 28 is a common factor a common denominator so 7 times 4 and 2 times 4, that's 8 plus, and that's 4 times 7, 8 plus 7, so you get 15 over 28. Okay, there's the answer to part A, 15 over 28. Part B says find the probability of G. Okay, now we know um, F and G are independent, so we know this fact the probability of F times the probability of G is equal to the probability of F intersection G. We know that, all right? So that's going to help us here. So let's just set up the same equation for F and G. We can say the probability of F plus the probability of G. Let's do it the other way around. The probability of F union G, which we, we, which we know, is equal to the probability of F plus the probability of G minus the probability of the intersection. Now we don't, we can't say this is zero now because they're independent. We don't know that they're mutually exclusive. It says they're independent, so we know that this is equal to the probability of these two together. All right, so F union G, we already know, is 5 over 8. We got that already. The probability of F, uh, we're told, is 2 over 7. Probability of G is what we have to find. Now, what we can do here is we can say this part is the same as the probability of F times the probability of G, All right? As we know from this, because they're independent. So we know the probability of f already is 2 over 7. So I can actually do something here. I can say, let's just simplify this a bit. That's 5 over 8 minus 2 over 7 equals the probability of g minus 
2 over 7 times the probability of g. All right, so we've got now just one unknown. We can solve for this. So 5 over 8 minus 2 over 7, uh, you've got 56. That's going to be times 7. That's 35 minus, that's going to be times 8, 16. Is that right? Yeah, equals the probability of g minus 2 sevenths of the probability of g. Well, that's like 1 minus 2 sevenths, which is 5 over 7. So that's 5 over 7 times the probability of g. Okay, so now we can simplify this. 7 goes into 56 8 times. That's going to be a 1 there. 35 minus 16, that's 19, isn't that right? That's 16, 26, 36. That's 19 over 40 equals the probability of g. I've just divided all sides by 5 as well. So the probability of g, therefore, is 19 over 40. Okay, there's the answer to that question. So you have 15 over 28, 19 over 40. Then it says, find the probability of f intersection g. As we said, f and g are independent events. So I can say that's equal to the probability of f times the probability of g. And I know both of them now. Okay, the probability of f, we were, we were told in the question as 2 over 7. So we have 2 over 7 times what we just found, 19 over 40. So 2 will cancel with the 40, give you 20. So you have 19 over 140. And there's the answer to that. And there we have the answer to this whole question. So you have to understand the definitions of mutually exclusive and independent events. Very important in this whole of this question. Um, and that concludes question number three from the October 2023 Statistics S1 paper. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this part of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the topic of statistics, okay, um, and probability uh, in S1 can be found in this uh, playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can find videos which, uh, or find a video which tells you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for by clicking on the link at the end over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.